Good morning. Today, in honor of St. Joseph, we offer the votive mass to St. Joseph. Please join me in the Tantaphon. He will be great in the sight of the Lord. He will be filled with the Holy Spirit, even from his mother's womb, and many will rejoice at his birth. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. The Lord be with you. Let us take a moment to call to mind our sin. You were sent to heal the contrite of heart. Lord, have mercy. You came to call sinners. Christ, have mercy. You are seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us everlasting life. Let us pray. Grant we pray, O, o God, who in your inexpressible providence were pleased to choose St. Joseph, a spouse of the Most Holy Mother of your Son. Grant we pray that we who revere him as our protector on earth may be worthy of his heavenly intercession. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. You, O oh man, are without excuse. Every one of you who passes judgment, for by the standard by which you judge another, you condemn yourself, since you, the judge, do the very same things. We know that the judgment of God on those who do such things is true. Do you suppose, then, you who judge those who engage in such things and yet do them yourself, that you will escape the judgment of God? Or do you hold his priceless kindness, forbearance, and patience in low esteem, unaware that the kindness of God would lead you to repentance? But your stubbornness and impentant heart you are storing up wrath for yourself. For the day of wrath and revelation of the just judgment of God, who will repay everyone according to his works, eternal life to those who seek glory, honor and immortality to perseverance, perseverance in God in good works, but wrath and fury to those who selfishly disobey the truth and obey wickedness. Yes, affliction and distress will come upon everyone who does evil, Jew first and then Greek. But there will be glory, honor, and peace for everyone who does good, Jew first and then Greek. There is no partiality with God. The word of the Lord. Be to God. Lord, you give back to everyone according to his works. Only in God is my soul at rest. From him comes my salvation. He, on, he only is my rock and my salvation, my stronghold. I shall not be disturbed at all. Lord, you give back to everyone according to his works. Only in God be at rest, my soul. For from him comes my hope. He only is my rock and my salvation, my stronghold. I shall not be disturbed. Lord, you give back to everyone according to his works. Trust in him at all times, O my people. Pour out your hearts before him. God is our refuge. Lord, you give back to everyone according to his works.
Hallelujah. Hallelujah. My sheep hear my voice, says the Lord. I know them, and they follow me. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. The Lord said, Woe to you, Pharisees! You pay tithes of mint and rue and of every garden herb, but you pay no attention to judgment and to love for God. These you should have done without overlooking the others. Woe to you, Pharisees! You love the seat of honor in synagogues and greetings in marketplaces. Woe to you! You are like unseen graves over which people unknowingly walk. Then one of the scholars of the law said to him in reply, Teacher, by saying this, you are insulting us too. And he said, Woe also to you, scholars of the law. You impose on people burdens hard to carry, but you yourselves not lift one finger to touch them. The Gospel of the Lord. So a few housekeeping details. Once, so once again, remind everyone that um, in the year of St. Joseph, that we um, offer the votive mass to St. Joseph. There's not another feast day on Wednesdays. And in substitution of the prayers of the faith, we're going to pray the prayer to St. Joseph, which we always have out um, as a handout when you walk in on the side door here. And um, you may notice a couple people have um, complimented me on a couple of new vestments I bought recently. Um, there's actually a group of Vietnamese sisters that moved to Homa this past year and opened a religious house um, in honor of St. Joseph, and they sell um, vestments and other religious goods. So um, you may have noticed I started wearing the chasuble with the, um, this applique, this image of um, St. Joseph. This is actually my um, birthday gift for my mom, so I really enjoyed being able to um, share this gift with y'all in our um, votive masses for St. Joseph on Wednesdays. And you got that right, amen. God bless Mama. So today in our first reading, we continue in our journey with St. Paul's letter to the Romans. We jump to the second chapter today. It says at the end, yes, affliction and distress will come upon everyone who does evil. Jew first and then Greek. There will be honor, glory, and peace for everyone who does good. Jew first and then Greek. St. Paul mentions Jews and Greeks because this second chapter, in the opening of the second chapter of Romans, he's addressing the Jewish and the Gentile Christians. We have to remember that Christianity is new, and everyone at this time, they're not baby baptisms, they're adult baptisms. Gentile converts to Christianity in the first age of Christianity. So. What's happening is Jewish Christians are judging new Gentile converts to Christianity. So St. Paul says, for by the standard by which you judge another, you condemn yourself. Because the Jews see themselves as better than the Gentiles. And so the newly minted Jewish Christians are holding unfair expectations upon the newly converted Gentile Christians. And we see the same theme in our gospel today as Jesus upbraids the scholars of the law and the Pharisees. He says to the Pharisees that you are like unseen graves over which people unknowingly walk. Youch, that is harsh. And then he goes on to say to the scholars of the law that you impose on people burdens hard to carry, but you yourselves do not lift one finger to touch them. So Jesus is upbraiding the leaders of the Jewish law in the gospel today, once again with that theme of you're being unfair, you're being overly burdensome, you're judging others, but it's like the classic, you're pointing the finger at them, but three fingers back at yourself. Today I'd like to encourage us to keep in mind our priest, as these readings kind of reflect on the gift of the priesthood and religious leaders and our accountability to practice what we preach. I just want to give a little shout out today um, to many of our priests 
who are sacrificing and who are practicing what they preach throughout our Bayou area. Uh, maybe not so much here in Thibodeau, but certainly in Lower Lafourche and Lower Terrebonne Parish, many of our priests are displaced. It will be well over a year that many of them will not be able to return to live in their rectories. Some of them are in temporary housing at Lumen Christi Retreat Center. Others are one by one having trailers or RVs placed on the church property where they can, you know, live in that space to be able to offer daily mass and to be available for anointing and visitation with their community. So in a special way, um, you know, many of our priests have been, you know, heroic in this time. And at times their story goes untold. But yeah, please continue to keep um, our priests in your prayers. And one way I can invite you to pray for me is just to continue to pray um, for my family um, who's been displaced. As I've shared a little bit um, with you, I have a little update and, and some good news. Um, my parent was able to come back uh, to Homa, so we're very uh, excited for that. Um, he had been displaced um, to Baton Rouge because um, he lives in a home and um, had to be displaced um, to Baton Rouge from Homa, but I'm very um, happy that, that his home in Homa has reopened and that he's able to um, be back here um, where his daughters um, can visit him and um, the Trek family can, you know, visit him, you know, whenever we, um, you know, can. Um, he's back here in town. So we're very um, grateful for that. Um, please continue to lift up uh, my grandmother. Um, she continues um, to reside in Shreveport. Um, she was displaced from her home in Homa. Uh, her home in Homa uh, took a lot of damage. Um, the roof came off. So there's an expectation of a half a year until the residents um, can return. And so um, the future is uncertain, but we're glad that we found a good home in Shreveport or Chabelle to stay um, for the time being. So that's just a way um, that you could, um, you know, pray for me um, in that way. And I know for many of us, you know, in times like this, um, this aftermath of Hurricane Ida, you know, we wonder how can we pray and how can we help others. Uh, I just want to um, also just kind of, you know, give a shout. There, there are so many people who have welcomed other people um, into their homes. I think that's what's touched me the most, um, just as, as a priest, just hearing the stories of um, parishioners and those in our Thibodeau community and beyond that, that have welcomed those who have been displaced um, in their homes. Um, especially, you know, here in Thibodeau, you know, that's happened. And the thing that has caught my attention the most is our young adults um, that have been displaced. Young adults at the, um, at the budding years of their adult life, um, just beginning to learn how to, um, you know, support themselves, maybe, you know, as nickel students, you know, renting their first apartment, and then that apartment had water damage, and they have to move out of that apartment and, um, you know, find housing. And people here in Thibodeau have opened their homes, you know, to allow some of these college students to stay with them so they can continue their education at Nichols. So that's probably been the most touching, um, you know, news that I've heard um, locally. But there are so many um, untold stories and so many hidden ways um, that people are lifting that finger, um, that people are, you know, practicing what they preach as Christians and are doing the best that they can to assist those in need in the recovery of Hurricane Ida. So once again, thank you all for joining for um, Daily Mass. Please continue to pray your daily rosary in this month of our Blessed Mother and the Rosary. And let us also implore the intercession of St. Joseph as we celebrate his year, for he was the protector of the Holy Family and provider. And of course, he is our protector and a sure and certain support for those for whom we pray as we continue in this aftermath of Hurricane Ida. Let us now pray the prayer of Pope Leo XIII to St. Joseph. 
To you, O blessed Joseph, we have recourse in our affliction. Having implored the help of your most holy spouse, we now, with hearts filled with confidence, earnestly beg you to take us under your protection. Through that sacred bond of charity, which united you to the Immaculate Virgin Mother of God, and by that fatherly love with which you embraced the child Jesus, we humbly beg you to look graciously upon the beloved inheritance which Jesus Christ purchased by his blood, and to aid us in our necessities with your power and strength. Defend, O most watchful guardian of the Holy Family, the chosen children of Jesus Christ. Keep from us, O most loving Father, all blight of error and corruption. Aid us from on high, most valiant defender, in this conflict with the powers of darkness. And just as you once saved the child Jesus from mortal danger, so now defend God's holy church from the snares of the enemy and from all adversity. Shield us by your constant protection, so that supported by your example and strengthened by your help, you may be able to live a virtuous life, die a happy death, and obtain everlasting bliss in heaven. Amen. Pray, brethren, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. As we prepare to offer the sacrifice of praise, O Holy Father, we humbly ask to be sustained in our service by the prayers of St. Joseph, whom you called to watch like a father on earth over your only begotten Son, who lives and reigns forever and ever. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, and in honoring St. Joseph, to give you fitting praise, to glorify you and bless you. For this just man was given by you as spouse to the Virgin Mother of God, and set as a wise and faithful servant in charge of your household, to watch like a father over your only begotten Son, who was conceived by the overshadowing of the Holy Spirit, our Lord Jesus Christ. Through him, the angels praise your majesty, dominions adore, and powers tremble before you. Heaven and the virtues of heaven and the blessed seraphim worship together with exaltation. May our voices, we pray, join with theirs in humble praise as we acclaim. Holy, holy. Holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest.
You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. The time who was betrayed entered willingly into his passion. He took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks they have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ would be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world, and bring her to the fullness of charity. Together, Francis, our Pope, and Shelton, Joseph, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, who blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, May merits be co heirs to eternal life. May praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, and with him, and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope in the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace, I leave you, my peace, I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. Let's offer each other the sign of peace. Lamb of God, Lamb of God, 
Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I'm not worthy they should enter into my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. Prayer of spiritual communion. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there, and unite myself fully to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen.
Let us pray. Restored by these life-giving sacraments, Lord, may we live for you always in justice and holiness, helped by the example and intercession of St. Joseph, who in carrying out your great mysteries served you as a man just and obedient, through Christ our Lord. Amen. So once again, thank you all for joining us for our vote of Mass on Wednesdays for this year of St. Joseph, and please continue to join us on these Wednesdays in honor of St. Joseph. And once again, as we announced this past weekend, you can check in our bulletins, um, available in the vestibule at the side door, handicap door here. Um, we have a consecration to St. Joseph, so um, we'll be using Father Donald Calloway's Consecration to St. Joseph. Um, it's a wonderful um, book, wonderful read, so if you're interested in joining us, um, please call the church office. Um, we'll be um, consecrating to St. Joseph um, for the end of the um, year of St. Joseph on December 8th, the Feast of Mac Conception. But it's a 33 day consecration, so if you want to join, um, please call the office now so you can get a book and be ready to start with us um, for those 33 days of prayer and reflection. Also, um, we have Exalted tonight, so um, our theme will be Gratitude at 6.30 tonight. Um, it's going at 6.30 here at St. Genevieve tonight. We'll have Adoration and Confession um, available with um, a message on Gratitude. And don't forget, we do have our 7.30 p.m. St. Genevieve um, Facebook Live um, Rosary for every night of um, October. And yeah, we're also going to be having a mission on St. Joseph um, during Advent. There'll be a four-night mission on the Four Dreams of um, St. Joseph. So um, keep your eyes peeled in our bulletin um, for all those wonderful opportunities. And, and don't forget about our new Vietnamese sisters in, in Homa, um, you know, because if you wanted to get a Christmas gift for a priest, a chaz will be really nice. And I'm just saying, on Corporate Drive, I'll get you the address. Um, it's called St. Joseph um, Shop, and it's right by um, White Bow in Song Ping Nong. So, um, it's a cool little place to um, support our local, um, you know, religious um, supply stores, so that you can consider for Christmas. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace. Amen. Speak to God. St. Michael, Amen. the Lord, the of God, may our protection against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him and humbly pray. And do thou, O Prince of the Heavenly Host, by the power of God, cast into hell Satan and all the evil spirits who prowl about the world, seeking the ruins of souls. Amen. Remember, most gracious. Prince.